hithost.org 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 swag 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 yo okay welcome back to another installment of how to build your own wordpress website all right so this this is what i'm going to do in this video what we're going to discuss is how to customize your website all right so i really started to do it already but i said let me stop and i'm gonna show you guys everything from a to z as far as how to customize your website now i gotta tell you this may be one of the longest tutorials out of the bunch that i'm that i'm putting together for you here i mean because this one it has a you know a lot of information in it about graphic design and all that so you really have to pay attention if you want to do it yourself uh if you don't want to do it yourself or you don't have the time to do it yourself go ahead and hire another web designer and they'll be able to or give us a call and hire us and then we'll be able to go ahead and get the graphic section of your website done alright so uh, basically what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to change the images that's going to be on your theme so whatever theme you download is going to have images in it and I'm going to show you how to change the images and put your images in no matter what theme it is I'm going to show you how to do that in whatever theme you choose so for instance, when I downloaded this theme, it already had a logo image right here to the top. You see where I put my logo at. And it already had a image right here, you know. And I wanted to change that and put my image there, right? So I'm going to show you how I changed this, and I'm going to show you how to change this. And um, I'm going to show you uh, a couple different ways you can do it. Okay, so uh, the first thing that you're going to need, if you don't already have it, is a copy of Photoshop. Now, if you don't have a copy of Photoshop, you should be able to find a link below this video. You click on that link, and then you'll be able to get you a copy of Photoshop or get you a demo of the Photoshop software. Um, if you do have a copy of Photoshop, stand by. You're good to go. Um, now, if you don't plan on getting a copy of Photoshop, or uh, if you don't plan on doing this portion of the tutorial, you can simply have somebody, um, you know, have, you can hire somebody to actually come to the site that you're working on. And then you can hire somebody to create you a logo that fits in your logo area and have somebody, you know, swap out the photos on the site um, with photos that you want to be on the site. All right, so you can basically have somebody create your own photos or create your graphic design and put it on here for you or you can do it yourself. Okay, so uh, the first thing that you're going to need to uh, swap the photos out on the site is you're going to need a software called Core FTP. All right, so it's called Core FTP. So go ahead and go to Google and then type Core FTP. All right, so you click on the first link there, and then it's going to say Download Core FTP now. You click on that link. All right, and then it's going to say uh, Core FTP, the free version. All right, you want to download that. You click right there first link then it'll automatically start downloading core FTP for you alright so I actually already have core FTP uh, but once it downloads you want to click on it and go ahead and run the software and install the software alright so after that you'll be able to find core FTP in your sidebar alright or, you, or you'll be able to go to programs and then you find core FTP alright so what you want to do is go ahead and open up core FTP Alright, so when you open it up, it's going to bring you to a page like this. Now, now um, it's going to show you this, this piece of the software right here. So, this is where you actually connect your hosting account at into Core FTP. So, you can actually log into the back end of your website and make changes. So, what Core FTP actually does is it helps you to log into the back, of your web, the back end of your website and to actually make changes on, on the back end side of your website. All right, so you, the only thing you're really going to be using Core FTP for is to determine, you know, which images, you know, what are the names of the images, and to send the images from the back end of your site to your actual desktop. And then you're going to be putting the images in Photoshop, and then from Photoshop you'll edit the images, and then you'll resave them, and you'll send them back to your website using Core FTP. So I'm going to show you how that, how that works right now. 
All right, but the first thing you have to do is you have to log into you have to you have to create a new log into FTP, and uh, what you do is click on the new site button. All right, so when the new site button comes up, you want to give your site a name. All right, so uh, this site is going to be EMS CEO Beats. So I'll go ahead and click on new site, and then I'll type EMS CEO Beats. E A B E A T Z dot B. And then you'll see how it automatically um, types the name over here. All right, so once you do that, you need your host. Or IP URL. And you're going to get this if in your hosting email that you got when you signed up for your website. Alright, so what you want to do is go back to your Yahoo, I mean, go back to your email, wherever you signed up at. You should have got an email with your new account information. You want to go back to that email and you want to uh, find that email that you got from whodahost.com that's going to have all your hosting information in there. All right, so the email is going to look something like this. Okay, to say who the host working for you all day, all night, uh, new account information. All right, so uh, the first thing you're going to need for Core FTP is your host or IP URL. All right, so you basically copy that. Here it is right here, server IP. All right, you copy the you copy that number right there. All right, then once you copy that number, you come back to Core FTP and you paste that number right there. All right, now you need the username and the password to access your uh, your account. All right, so you come back to Core FTP and you copy your username to your uh, posting account. Because what this software is going to do is basically log you into log you into the back end of your hosting account. Now, um, when you got that hosting email your, where it says login details, you're going to copy the username that's right there. And you're gonna copy the password right that's right there. So mine isn't right there, so let me actually log into uh the back end of my site and see what mine is there. Give me just a second. Alright, so once you get that username and password, you wanna copy your username or type your username and you paste your username right there where it says username. Alright, then you get your password and you copy your password or you type your password right there where it says password. And then after that, you wanna click connect. All right, now if you look over here to the right side, this little, this little box on the right side, you'll see that you're connected to the back end of your hosting account, the back end of your website. Now, if you look over here to the left side, this should be your actual desktop on your computer. All right, so if you're not at your desktop, what you want to do is click this little tab right here to the left. All right, and then you find your desktop, click on it, and then you click OK. All right, and then that'll take you to your desktop. All right, so um, that's what I'm going to be working with now. If you're if you're going to be working with your with your My Documents folder, then you click that folder. Uh, if you're going to be working with a specific folder on your desktop, the one I'm going to be working with is Evolution Marketing. You click that folder, and then you click OK, and then you'll be working in that specific folder. So on the right side, you got your website, your hosting account right here at the back end of that. On this side, you got your computer, all the files and folders on your computer. So this is all the files and folders on your hosting account. This is all the files and folders folders on your computer. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to locate your theme that you used in WordPress in Core FTP. All right, so the way you do that is you want to go to click on Public HTML. You're always going to click on Public HTML because that's where your your website that you see online is going to be located at. All right, so you see that WordPress is installed here. Um, but what you want to do is you want to click on WP Content and then Themes. So this is all the WordPress themes that you upload to your account or that you add to your WordPress account or, or that you try out but you don't like, like you activate them and try them out. They're going to be in this theme section right here. And the theme that we're using, remember, is called the Responsive Theme. All right, so what I'm going to do is click on Responsive. All right, so this is the actual theme that I'm using. So the only folder that I'm going to be messing with or working with in this section is the images folder because in this folder is where all of the images are at that are on this website. Now, if you'll see, there are only one, two, three, four images. If I go back to the site, there's one, two, this little blue bar right here, that's one, and probably this little black bar right here, that's the fourth image right there. Okay, so... Okay, now to change the images that's on the home page of the site, 
All you simply have, simply have to do is find out what the name of the image is that you want to change. Once you find out what the name of the image is, then you will be able to change that image. And I'm going to show you how. So the first thing, to find out what the name of the image is, all you do is you right click on the image, and then you click on Save Image. Now you're not going to actually save it, you just want to find out what the name of it is. So you'll see that the name of this image is Featured-Image, and it's a PNG image. All right, so I'm going to close that. And I'm going to go back to Core FTP, and I'm going to find that image, and it's right here. It's featured-image.png. All right, so what I'm going to do is I want to edit this image. All right, so what I do is I create a folder on my desktop or on my computer, or I go to the folder that I already created for myself, which is, in my case, EMS CEO Beats. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to make a little folder within that, and I'm going to call it Images from Website. All right, so then I'm going to click OK, and you'll see that the folder creates right there. So all I did to create that folder was I clicked on this little folder icon right here, created a name, and now that folder is there. So I'm going to open that folder up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and hold. I'm going to go ahead and click on the first image, and then I'm going to hold down my Shift key and click on the last image, and that's going to highlight all the images. And then I'm going to hit this little button right here to send all these images from my hosting account to that folder that I just created uh, on my on my computer. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Photoshop. All right. So uh, once I get to Photoshop, all I'm going to do is just find the name of these images again. And then I'm going to open each image up in Photoshop, and I'm going to change the image to what I want it to be. Now, the the secret is not to change the name of the image or the type of file the image is. You just want to simply change the image, resave it, and send it back to your uh, back to your hosting account through your images folder in WordPress. And when I refresh the page, you'll see that my image refreshes as well to the image that I just changed it. All right, so what I do now is go ahead and open up Photoshop or in any image editor that you want to use. It doesn't have to be Photoshop, but that's just what I use. And I recommend you getting, a, getting your hands on a copy of Photoshop if you're going to be doing any graphic design work, such as business cards, or if you're planning on doing your CD covers, or uh, any posters or flyers or club flyers. You want to have Photoshop. That's what everybody uses, Photoshop or either Adobe Illustrator to actually do those type things. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on File, and then I'm going to click on Open, and then I'm going to find the image on my on my computer that I just sent over from uh, my hosting account. And I remember it's in the EMS CEO Beats folder and the Images from Website folder. And the name of the image was Featured-Image. All right, so I'll go ahead and click on that, and there is the image right there that was on my website. So uh, what I want to do while, while I'm in Photoshop I'm going to go ahead and hit this little button right here. Well, first I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate the layer or the image. All right, now I'm going to hit that button right there and hit that button right there. Then there's no image there. That's only a space, and it's the same size of the space on the website where that image was. All right, so this is where your graphic design skills is. It comes in. If you're into graphic designing or can do graphic design, you can create whatever you want to create in this little box. You can write whatever you want to write in this little box. Uh, but in my case, I'm just going to take another picture that I already created. All right, then I'm going to place that picture in that box. All right, let me stretch it out. All right, so uh, after that, I just hit the little check, check button because this is an image that I already created in Photoshop. All right, then what I want to do now is go to File and Save As, and then I'm going to save this image as a PNG image. You'll notice when I come down here and I and I and I tap uh, and click on PMG PNG, you see that there's the image there that says Featured Image. All right, so I just basically I'm, I want to click on that. And then I'll see that the name changed down here to Featured Image as well. All right, so you just click on it, the name will change. Now, once you click on it and the name changed down here, then you want to go ahead and hit Save. All right, it says Featured Image PNG already exists. Do you want to replace it? Yes, I do. So I'm going to hit OK. 
All right, and then okay. All right, so then I'm gonna go back to Core FTP. I'm gonna hit the refresh button, that little circle right there. Refresh. I'm gonna click on feature image. And I'm gonna send that feature image over to my desktop, over to my uh, hosting account. It's gonna say um, that this folder already contains the file name, feature image. Oh, I'm gonna overwrite that because what I'm doing is replacing the one that's in there with the one that I just created. All right, so I'm going to minimize all of this. I'm going to go back to the website page. And I'm going to refresh that page, and then boom, there's the image I just created, you know, right there. And and it's as simple as that, you know. And, it, and I know at first it may look a little complicated, or it may not be something you want to mess around with. But I'm telling you, the more that you, to try it out, the more you try it out, and the more you practice it, the better you're going to get. And not only will you be able to create your website. You'll be able to create websites for others. You know what I'm saying? You'll be able to actually make money uh, doing this type of stuff. But you know, just take some time and 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 uh, and learn how to do it. And if not, you know, just set some funds aside to actually pay someone to do it and do it right for you. All right. So what I did was I put my image there. Now, actually, I'm not real satisfied with the size of the image. So I'm going to see can I like make the image a little longer like maybe about the same size that this is here alright so to simply do that I'm just gonna go back to Photoshop I'm gonna go to image I'm gonna go to canvas size and I'm gonna I'm gonna go to pixels and I'm gonna change my canvas size okay so the width of this image is 440 pixels the height is 300 pixels I change it to like maybe 350 pixels alright I'm gonna hit OK alright so I'm gonna take my image and pull it up there, I'm going to drag it down, uh, that actually stretches it out a little bit, I don't want to do that, alright, so, maybe I'll do something like, create a background, and then just color the background in, so what I do is click on the, this little color swatch right here, I go down and make my color black, alright, then I'm going to go ahead and change the color of the background. All right, now again, uh, to, to, if you don't know how to use Photoshop, your best bet is to just, you know, hire somebody to do this for you. Get a friend to go ahead and create the images for you so you can place them on your website. Um, but if you do know how to, if you want to know how to use Photoshop, just go to YouTube. You know, I learned everything, really most of everything I learned, I learned it from YouTube. So you go to, you get your copy of Photoshop, you go to YouTube and, and search for stuff like how to create club flyers and how to create mixtape covers. And you watch those videos and then you'll see you know that'll basically teach you how to use Photoshop alright that's how I learn alright so um, what I'm gonna do is go back to Core FTP since I just resaved my images I'm gonna hit the little refresh button and refresh it then I'm gonna go ahead and send a new image over to the website I'm gonna go back to the website now and refresh the site alright and there you see that the image has got some, some more length on it now and it's about the same length as this, this little blue bar right here okay so uh, I've changed the image right here on the home page. Now I already changed the image up here, and I basically did it the exact same way. Um, went back to Core FTP. Well, first, first of all, I right-clicked on the image. I went to Save As, and I see that this image is called Crop Beats Logo. All right. So I'm gonna hit Cancel. I went back to FTP, and then I. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you how to change this because I, I changed this a different way, and I'm going to show you how to change this as well. But let me go ahead and show you how to change it in Photoshop. All right, so what I basically did was uh, let me get the name of the image again. The name of this image is going to be uh, logo. All right. So the reason the name is different is because I already changed it. But what you do is you go back to Core FTP and you want to go to default logo. All right. So you make sure you got that that image over here in your folder. All right, you go to Photoshop, you go to File, Open, and then you open Default Logo, and that's the old responsive logo that was right there. So all I did was I hit that little eye right there and and, and, and deleted what was there, or I just kind of mutes it, make, makes it go away, makes it go away. Then I go to File and I want to go to Place, so I want to place my logo on the inside of this box. All right, so I find my logo here, EMS CEO Beats. Then I place the logo there, and then I want to go ahead and stretch it out. Uh, MSCO. 
Then I hit save. Okay. Actually, let me stretch it out some more. And another reason why I went to file and place instead of file is and open is because when you go to file and open, it actually opens up a new tab for you. You know, so you don't want to open up a new tab. You when you want to place a document on the inside of a box on the inside of some work that you're already working on, you go to file and place and you place it there. All right, because again, if you go to open it, it'll open it up in a new tab. This is a quick Photoshop lesson. I'm gonna throw it in there for you. All right, so um, after that, you want to go to save. And then I'm going to go back to PNG because this logo is a PNG and click on default logo and then you'll see that it changes the default logo down there and then you hit save and OK. Alright, so once you do that, you go ahead and open up Core FTP. You refresh the page here. Alright, you click on default logo and you want to send default logo over to your website. Once you do that, you come back to the page here. And then you hit refresh. Okay, well the reason mine didn't change is because I, I added this logo a different way. And I'll show you exactly what I did with that uh, right now. But now let me go ahead and show you how to change the the blue um, button here. And then we'll come back to that. Alright, so what you want to do now is you want to right click on the button. And then you go to, uh, okay, hold on a second. Let me go to Photoshop. Open. All right, so that's it. So the button is not actually a uh, a photo. The button is not actually a photo. But um, so I'm not gonna mess with that. Um, but if you want to change like the background, like this is the background right here. Believe it or not, just this little bar right here. And you'll notice that if I like just just click on something here, and, like if I was to color that in, make that a certain color. And then I go to save as and then PNG. Sorry, and it's gonna change the BG select. Go to save. And I go back to core FTP. And then I refresh my menu here, my folder, click on BG, it stands for background and send that over. Go to overwrite. If I go back to my site and refresh my page, you'll notice that my background is gonna change. Okay, so it didn't actually change. Well, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you have to do it the second way, but I'm going to show you how to do it if you want to change the background and, and you know, a little stuff like that. But um, that's basically how you how you edit your images um, in Photoshop. So let me go ahead and do a Control Z here and change that back the way it was. Cause I don't want to mess something up. I'll go ahead and go to Save As. Alright, it's already at PMG. Click on BG Select, Save. And then I'll go ahead and send the original one. We'll refresh my folder. And I'll send the original one back to the website because it changed somewhere on the website, but I just don't know where. And I don't want to be looking at a page and later on down the line and then I see that, you know, the background is black or something like that. So I changed that back. Okay, so now let me show you how to change your logo and other. Um, Photos in well. So now, as far as changing the photos, um, this is going to be one of the easiest ways for you to change this photo or any photos on your site. But um, as far as changing your logo, there's always usually a a, a logo section or a, or um, background section where you can make changes at in the dashboard of your website. All right. So we're through with Photoshop. So if you're going to be custom, doing any more customizing, like a custom background, maybe like with a picture or whatever in there, and um. Let me show you a site I did with a custom background that have a, a picture in there. Trap for a website I did for a friend of mine called rappertrap.com. And if you check out this background, you'll see that, you know, I got like a city in the background. I got a girl. She's standing in the background. If I do like a control minus or zoom out, you'll see that's what the background actually looks like. So it actually repeats itself, but it's just one long image. And I got a girl that I cut out in Photoshop and I put in there. And then I just, only thing I simply did was um, I, I sent the background to Photoshop just like I was trying to do right here. 
and then I uh, place my photo as the background, open my photo up as the background, and then I saved it as the same name that the background was for that site, which is BG, whatever it was. And once I saved it, I went back to uh, Core FTP and I sent it over, and then I refreshed this page, and then the background that I custom created in Photoshop was there. So sometimes it works that easy. Sometimes it doesn't work that easy. You know, sometimes there's a lot of coding involved that you have to do to get it right. That's why I said that, you know, practice makes perfect with this kind of thing. And to really customize your site, what you want to do is practice on it or you want to hire somebody else to do it before you mess everything up. Okay. Now, um, how to edit the header and the background in the back end of the WordPress, all right? Because you can do this in your dashboard of WordPress as well. So you just click on uh, EMS, or you click on uh, your website name. It's going to be right there. In every website, um, not every website, but almost every theme that you download is going to have a theme options panel, all right? And what you do is you go, if you, you go down to appearance, and then you go to theme options. All right, so theme options are going to be things that you can change in your theme that's easy for you to change. You know, it's going to have a section in the dashboard of your site where you can just simply click, <coughs> and you can make changes to the theme option, to the theme under the theme options tab in the back end of your site. So, for instance, if I wanted to, if I wanted to get rid of this click to hear my beats button, all I would do is just click, it says disable call to action button. That's what that button is, the call to action. It's a button that's telling you to do something, that wants you to do something. All right, so what you would do is you would click check to disable. All right, so you, if you hit save, you go back to the home page and refresh, you'll see that that button is gone. All right, so that's another easy way that you can edit stuff <coughs> on the home page of your site if you have a theme option. So each website, each uh, WordPress theme, I mean, each WordPress theme is going to offer a different theme options that you could use to actually customize your website. All right, so after that, we'll go ahead and go to the logo upload section because, like I said, some some uh, some uh, themes allow you to upload your own logo without having to do all that FTP and Photoshop and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to do it from the back end of your site, you just go to logo upload. And then uh, you go to click here. All right, so once you go to click here, you will see that this is the logo that I've already uh, uploaded here. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to remove this image. I'm going to restore the original header image. Now, that's what the original header image is going to look like now because I actually changed the header image in the WordPress folder in the back end of my site. Now, I did that in Photoshop, and then I sent that back to my to my hosting account, I sent that back to the back end of my WordPress site. So instead of instead of uh, the theme actually pulling up the responsive theme or the responsive logo that was already there, it's not going to pull that up because I have replaced that with this EMS CEO um, logo that's right here. All right. So again, so in order to change, another way to change your logo is um, you go to the to the uh, theme options panel. And then you click on change your logo. Uh, you click on header. Sometimes it'll bring you to a page where it says custom header. All right. So then there's going to be a box right here that says select file. <coughs> Once you select the file on your desktop, what you want to be your logo, you go to this button right here to upload the file. Once you upload it, you're going to be able to see the file down here. So you see that there's two different ones that I've uploaded. I've uploaded EMS CEO Beats and another EMS CEO Beats. All right, so um, once you upload it, you just tick on the one that you want to be the logo, and then you hit save. All right, and then once you go to your website and refresh the page, you'll see that your logo has changed. So really, you could upload all the different logos you want um, to this section of the site, and then you refresh the page, and then you'll see that the logo has changed. All right, so what I want to do is I want to restore the original header image because I like that one, you know, that I changed, and I'll just leave that one. You know, as is that says EMS CEO. Okay, so that's how you would change your logo in the in the back end of your WordPress website. All right. So uh, so another thing that you could do is let me go back to theme options and let's see what other options they give us here. Home page. Let's click on that. Okay. So this is where I changed my headline. All right. So 
where it says welcome at, you know, I type welcome right there, and it showed up right here, all right? Then I type two EMS CEO beats as the sub headline, and that showed up right here. And then I type my little uh, content right there, all right, and then that showed up right here. And then I changed my button where it says, it says something else, but I made it say click here to hear my beats. Then I put the link in there, which is the call to action URL. That's where you want people to go once they click that button. All right, so whenever somebody click that button, they're going to go to my Beats for Sale page, which I have not created yet, which I will be created in the next video. Okay. Now, uh, after that, close that up. Then you got your Webmaster too. All right, so uh, this is this is like, you know, for, for make your site come up in the search engine, all right? So uh, you, you really can hook this stuff up if you want to. Uh, if not, don't worry about it. But <coughs> if you want to, just go to Google Site Verification, type that in Google, or Bing Site Verification, type that in Google, and then you'll get the information that you need to fill in that section right there. All right, then you got your social icon. So if you have a Twitter account, you put your Twitter account information right there. If you got a Facebook, you put it right there. If you got a YouTube, you put your YouTube right there, and so and so. Then you save that, and that'll also appear uh, on the website there. And then, and that's it. And the rest of this is like coding stuff. You really don't want to mess with that. All right, so that's basically how I customized the front page of my website. All right, all I did was I put this picture in Photoshop and remade it. I took a picture of me and I put it right there and I did it using Core FTP in Photoshop or and then I did the same thing with the header image. Alright, so at first you don't want to really do too much. You know what I'm saying? You just want to get something up quick and if you want to get something up quick then that's the way to do it. You know what I'm saying? It's real simple and easy and it's only as hard as you make it. And again, if you got any problems with it or any problems doing you know your own graphic design or whatever. If you need to get help, get it. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave a bunch of links up on this video to different um, things that'll help you out as far as sites you can use to uh, get people to do graphic work for you. And there's this great site called Fiverr that I use. And you can really pay somebody like five dollars to actually do a logo like this for you. You know, um, so I mean it's a it's a lot of stuff you can get done. You know, what I'm saying if you just take the time to actually do it. Or, you know, if you want to do it, you know, and then again, if you don't want to do your site, if you ain't got time for it, feel free to give me a call and I'll be able to do one for you and uh, and get something nice up for you, you know, and start. And I, I can also help you get traffic to your site, build your fan base, whatever you're trying to do. You know, it really depends on you. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to change these three little widgets down here. <coughs> okay, so what you would do is uh, you come back to the back end of your site and you click on widgets. All right. So uh, once you click on widgets, and you look down here to the left, you'll see where it says Home Widget 1, Home Widget 2, Home Widget 3. All right, you go back to the home page, you'll see Home Widget 1, Home Widget 2, Home Widget 3. And uh, some things are different. Some things don't even have widgets. That's why you're going to really have to get some practice in and learn how to use your site, how to build your site, and then you'll know what thing, where to find what, you know. But this is basically a widget. So the way you change that up um, for home widget one, let's say I want to put my pages here that I create on my site. I'll take that pages tab right there and I'll drag that and drop that right there in that home widget one box. I'll give it a title and call it pages. I'm going to call it site pages. All right, then I'm going to hit save. Close, and I'm going to refresh my screen here, and then you'll see there's my site pages, About Me, Beats for Sale, Booking, Contact Me, and Media. Alright, so now I'm going to go to Home Widget 2, and then what I'll put here is categories, alright, because i got different categories on my site, categories that explain how to promote yourself online, categories that explain, you know, a whole bunch of different stuff. So I'll take categories and then I'll put categories right there. And then I'll name that site categories. Okay. T O R I E S. I'll save that. Alright, now I'm gonna refresh that. And then so you see the site categories. I got I haven't really created any categories yet, so it's just nothing right there. 
All right, so for the third widget, what I'll probably put right here is a, a beat that I made or something like that, all right, or a video, all right? So what I'll do is go to my YouTube page, and then I'll find the beat. <coughs> all right, so actually I had a little change of heart there. So instead of putting my site pages and site categories right there, what I'm just going to put is three of my beats right here on the uh on the home page. Alright, so so the beats that I already made are uploaded to YouTube. So if you got videos or something like that, then you can put your videos right there. And another good uh another good thing you can use to actually build your fan base and build your followers is put like, you know, if you do like how to how to make beat videos or something like that, you can put those videos right there as well. Or you can put videos of you making a beat on there or you can just put, you know, videos of your beat on there or whatever or samples of your beat on there in this section and um people will see that and they'll they'll uh you know that makes your site look good as well. So what I'm gonna do is go back to YouTube and I'm gonna grab the code here and I'm gonna use this one of the beats I'm gonna use right here. Uh I'll go ahead and copy that code. Alright, so now I'm gonna go back to uh the widget section here. I'm gonna remove the home widget one and the home widget two and I'm gonna put a text box right here. Alright. So I go ahead and paste the first beat right there. All right, and I'll call this beat sample one. All right. So after that, I'm gonna hit save. All right. Let me go back and refresh the page and see how it turned out. All right. So actually, it's, it's kind of too stressed out for me. So what I do is, what I do is go ahead and and make this a little smaller. So. I'm going to go back to my code. I'm going to remove everything before embed and everything after embed. All right. And after that, I'm going to change the size to the light. Maybe, uh, maybe 250 by, by 250 pixels. So it'll be 250 by 250. All right. So after that, I'm going to hit save. All right. Go back. And I'm going to refresh this page. All right, so you'll see that the beat is a, is a nice little, you know, nice little size now. Um, that don't make the page look too crazy. All right, so after that, I'm going to go to Home Widget 2. All right, first I'm going to go ahead and find my second beat that I'm going to use. Alright, so I got my second beat, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the uh the embed code to this beat. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go back, go ahead and minim hit the close button on the on the uh home widget one. I'm gonna grab another text little tab here, drag it over, drop it in the box. Alright, and I'll call this sample beat two. Alright, so I'll paste that that code right there. Alright, I'll go ahead and delete everything after embed and delete everything before embed. Alright, so then I'll come right here and I'll change this to 250 and I'm going to change the height to 250. Alright, so then I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to go back to the website, refresh the site, and then you'll see that I got my, my beat number two right there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give me a third beat. All right, so since I got a third beat, I'll go ahead and hit the embed code, grab the code. All right, I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit this little drop down for home widget three. I'm going to drag the text over there, the little text tab over there. All right, I'm going to paste my third beat in there, and I'll call this sample beat three. All right, so I'm going to delete everything before the embed code. I'm going to delete everything after the embed code. All right, so I'm going to change the size to 250. All 
Alright, change the size to 250. I'm gonna hit save. Close that. Refresh the screen. And now I got three of my beats on the home page. Alright, so you, if you'll see, if you notice, it's turning into a fully customizable website. You know what I'm saying? That I'll be able to promote, that I'll be able to produce and put out there to have something for people to contact me or to book me or to check out my music or to find out more about me or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it's turning into a nice little website here and you can do the same thing. Alright, so that's basically how you customize, you know, the home page of your website and I changed up a little bit of a few widgets on the uh on the website. Alright, so another thing I'm gonna show you how to do is how to customize the sidebar of your website. So for instance when you when you click on a page that has the sidebar like the contact us page, okay, you see the sidebar there. All right, you really don't need all of these different little um, widgets right there unless you want to. So to change the widgets on the sidebar, you come back over to the top and it says main sidebar. All right, so I got a search widget there. I'm going to remove the recent post widget. I'm going to remove the recent comment widget. I'm going to remove the archives widget because I'm not going to be blogging on this site. I'm going to remove, remove the meta widget and I'm going to keep the category widget there and I'll put the pages widget right on top of the category. And then I'm going to title that site pages. Then I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to refresh the screen and you'll notice that all of these little widgets on the side are going to disappear. Alright, so now you only have the site pages widget there and the categories widget. And that's as plain and simple as that. Now later on down the line when I show you how to, you know, create your opt in form so people can join your list and all that and join your fan base, you want to put that on the sidebar as well, you know, so you always want to have that visible as well. So if you'll notice on my pages with the sidebar, there isn't that long, you know, the, all them long widgets ain't there that I'm not using. Alright, so that's basically it. So the site is really almost done. Uh, the last video that I make will be the last video, the one up under this one, and it's going to show you how to create your own Beats for Sale page. It's also going to show you, we're also going to go over uh, other little things as far as, uh, you know, creating your, your uh, somewhere where people can subscribe and become a fan and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So I may change this, this right here to click here to join my fan base or click here to join my mailing list. All right, so I think that's what I'll do with that. I'll change this to click here to join my mailing list, and this is going to go to a page where people, when they click on it, they can join my mailing list or whatever for, you know, whatever free tutorials or maybe a free beat or something like that, you know. So uh, that's basically it, you know what I'm saying? So the site is almost done, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the last video. Go ahead and get to building your site. And remember to use the links up under this video to, uh, to grab the different pro products like Photoshop and all that or to sign up for the different sites where you can get help with building your site and if you don't want to get help with all those outside sites you can always contact me. All right? The reason I'm putting the outside sites there is because I want to give you guys options. You know what I'm saying? If you don't really like the graphic design work that I do you can actually use one of these sites to find somebody who may, who may be able to do something better. But at the end of the day you need to get your website up so you can get some more promoting and some more marketing going for yourself and try to get your name out there, all right? And the website's going to be your home, going to be your foundation for everything. So everything that you do should lead back to your website and your and get people to join your list, your fan base, all right? Everything that you do on Facebook, everything that you do on Twitter, everything that you do on all these other sites like Reverb Nation or whatever, all that stuff needs to lead back to your website because your website is, is always going to be in your hands, but you don't never know what's going to happen with all those other sites. All right, so this is your boy Money Marvin T again checking out. Thank you for watching the video. Peace. Hithost.org. 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 Swag, swag, swag. Yo, yo, you wanna be an artist who's ahead of the game? Making the bread and the fame, you got to do one thing. What's that? Go to Hit Host, make yourself a website. With their help, yo, you can get your web right. Log on right now, it's great. You can sell your tunes, make a little bit of cake. Do what you can do to make yourself be great. It's all upon you, you get to choose your fate. Do it right now, log on quick. They can help you out from start to finish. You need to log on right now. I said, you need to log on right now. I said, hit Hit Post. Dot org. Hit post. Dot org. Hit post. Dot org.